It seems appropriate on this here pancake day with Elimination Chamber creeping up on us. Some things are very up in the air about this Sunday, whereas others seem to be falling a bit flat. Pancake references, this is Raw Graded. Miz TV gets us started. Miz is on his Todd this week. John Morrison is apparently off with the producer recording a Bad Bunny diss track. Miz brings out the guest for Miz TV, Drew McIntyre. And Miz, who insists on calling Drew Andy on this occasion, keeps asking a whole bunch of questions about how he's feeling going into his title defence at the Elimination Chamber, how he feels about what transpired between him and Sheamus, but he doesn't give Drew any time to answer the question. Eventually, Andy has enough and tells Miz to interrupt him one more time and see what happens. Miz interrupts him one more time and he gets a Glasgow kiss for his trouble. Drew takes his leave and Miz recovers and says that he can see cracks forming in the WWE Champion ahead of the Elimination Chamber. He tells us that he, The Miz, is a master strategist and announces he is removing himself from the Elimination Chamber match. On commentary, they say this is a genius move because Miz, Mr. Money in the Bank, is gonna be fresh to, to swoop in with whoever survives the Elimination Chamber and maybe cash in his briefcase from there. This is a B as an opening. Great intensity from The Miz during this, this post head but bit of conversation like he, he's very much been the goofy guy for a while with John Morrison not here he seems to have brought out this aggression in him again which I really liked and Drew was brief but very very intense here as well this was this was a good start to Raw. The Hurt Business MVP Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander are taking on Riddle and the Lucha House Party in six man shenanigans next. Before the match Riddle talking about President's Day asks the Lucha House Party who their favourite presidents are. He suggests Abe Lincoln the Vampire Hunter Harrison Ford maybe a free bird like Michael Hayes uh, bants about presidents. Well, yeah. Lashley is watching on from a monitor when this match gets properly underway. Her business isolate Lindsay Dorado for a good long while. Uh, they keep shutting down hot tags to Grand Metalik. They even shut down a, a, a big push to take the lead when they when they go for those pre-break dives. And the Hurt Business just knock them all down as they do. Which I thought it was a nice way to get into a break. Uh, Hurt Business once again on top with Grand Metalik taking the shoeing after the break. Uh, he hits a beautiful of a backwards rolling DDT and makes the tag to Riddle from here. Riddle gets uh, a, a big flurry in, uh, hits MVP, uh, several big things from everybody, but then MVP then takes over on Riddle, hits the ball in elbow, doesn't get the win off the balling elbow. Everybody in at this point, Lucha House Party taking out Seddy and Shelton with big dives, it leaves Riddle in the ring alone with MVP, where he hits the final flash and the floating bro for the one, two, three. Riddle and the Luchas head back up the ramp only to be jumped by Bobby Lashley. Uh, Lashley takes out Dorado and Meta League and then puts the Hurt Lock on Riddle, just shaking him around and leaving him for Deed once again. B- minus for this one, decent enough TV match. Look for that backwards roll DDT that Meta League pulls out. That's very, very nice. We're getting set for a US title showdown uh, coming up this weekend. Backstage, Miz suggests to Adam Pearce that John Morrison replace him inside the Elimination Chamber. It's something that Adam Pearce will take under consideration. We then go to a different part of the Thunderdome backstage where Mandy Rose is chatting to Bad Bunny and then Damien Priest appears and then Damien Priest and Bad Bunny get interviewed about how, how Bad Bunny's finding things in WWE. And then in front of them, Akira Tozawa pins our truth to become the 24-7 champion. Tozawa backs into Damien Priest by accident and Priest bounces his head against the shipping container and tells Bad Bunny to make the cover. And one, two, three, just like that, Bad Bunny is the WWE 24-7 champion. Uh, that was bound to happen at some point, wasn't it? Just give him the belt to take on to interviews and stuff. That, that, that makes sense. That's a good business thing. I'm not against it. It's fine. It's fine. Kofi Kingston confronts Adam Pearce, who is considering putting John Morrison in the Elimination Chamber. Kofi says, hang on, if this Elimination Chamber is for former WWE World Champions, why aren't I in it? I want to be 
in that spot instead of John Morrison. Miz interrupts this and reminds us that John Morrison is a former ECW heavyweight champion of the world, which therefore apparently qualifies him. I know, right? So therefore, who else could go into this elimination chamber? Ezekiel Jackson, Christian, Tommy Dreamer, Matt Hardy, Mark Henry, Chava Guerrero, Kane, Sabu, Shane Douglas, The Sandman, Raven, Taz, Mikey Whipwreck, Tito Santana, Don Morocco, Johnny Hotbody, Vince McMahon. A lot of people all of a sudden could be in this match. Anyway, a decision is made whereby we're having Kofi Kingston and The Miz go one-on-one -on -one later on. If The Miz wins, Jomo is in the chamber. If Kofi wins, then Kofi's in the chamber. That seems like a fair compromise. The New Day hint at Kofi going into the chamber and starting Kofi Mania 2. Miz says, sequel suck, to which Kofi agrees, having seen Marine 4, Marine 5, and Marine 6. I like when WWE know when they've been crap. It's good. Asuka and Charlotte in action next. They're facing Lacey Evans and Peyton Royce. Lacey and Peyton come out with Lacey, running down Charlotte and Asuka on the microphone. They've got Charlotte a sweetheart candy that says, bite me on it. It doesn't say anything on it. Uh, she didn't get anything for Asuka, though. Uh, she says that, actually, Asuka's got a great gift for her, something I've won for a long, long time and says that this Sunday, Asuka is going to gift her the Raw Women's Championship. So the tag match gets underway uh, with Peyton Royce in this match getting beaten down by Asuka and Charlotte for a good while. Lacey keeping her distance, not wanting to be in there with Charlotte, it seems. Royce rallies and doesn't tag which seems strange since she's taken a beating, but she keeps fighting in this match. Uh, then Asuka turns the tide on her once again. Royce tries to make the tag to Lacey, but Charlotte pulls her all the way away from the corner, fights her outside the ring, and, Le and Peyton Royce is able to somehow stagger into the ring and make a limp tag to Lacey Evans. And a Evans just steps off, goes down the stairs, and gets away from there. Charlotte is begging for Lacey Evans to get in the ring, and Lacey reveals that she can't wrestle Charlotte tonight because she's pregnant. Boah! Even Ric Flair was surprised by this, who suddenly starts laughing and dancing and shouting, call me daddy, as, as they head up the ramp. Charlotte looks like she's about to cry. Lacey looks delighted. This is, uh, yeah. Okay. D minus, right. Naff match, rubbish pacing. Lacey is apparently legit Pregananant. That's what we're hearing today. So, I have a lot of questions about this. Well, Lacey, congratulations. How wonderful. You're bringing new life into the world. Already a mum. Uh, Going to be a, a mum once again. How exciting. Um, so, congratulations. I'm, I'm parking that there because I have serious reservations about how we got to this point. Well, I know how. I know all of that. But I mean, like, in storyline world. Um, Lacey walks out. No, L Lacey didn't get pregnant during the match. Lacey would have known that she was prudent before the match started, right? But yet she's walking out saying, hey, Asuka, this Sunday I'm having your title. And only when she gets tagged into the match and made legal in the match does she then step away and go, I am pregante. Like, <laughs> what were you going to do on Sunday? Were you going to wrestle whilst... Well, it's Prigante, like, what was, <laughs> I didn't like, and also that the match was, uh, it was just, uh, it was, it's just something about this Charlotte, it's something about Charlotte at the moment that just isn't click, and I know what it is, it's the fact that she's a face and not a heel, but even beyond that, like, there's something about it I'm not like, I feel like Asuka is badly positioned as, a lot of the time, sort of the fall guy in these situations, where it's Asuka that has to be saved. And Asuka's the Raw champion. It just... I was very confused by this. I'm nervous now whether they've, they, they've obviously... They, they painted themselves into a booking corner, and this was the best they could do? Really? <laughs> like... You could have had the Pregante announcement without having the match and exposing the stupidity of professional wrestling. I just didn't like it. I'm giving it a D minus. Seamus up next. He was promised one on one with Drew, and he's livid that he's not getting that. But he says, regardless, his plan is to win the gauntlet match tonight, earn the final spot in the chamber, 
and then kick everyone's head off and become the WWE champion. We'll see how that goes. Kofi Kingston and The Miz up next. If Kofi wins, not only is he in the chamber, but he's in the gauntlet match in the main event. We could be getting a double dip of Kofi. See how it goes. It's pretty much all Kofi with The Miz's comeback finally uh, coming to fruition after multiple failed attempts uh, following a neck breaker off the apron to the floor that looked really, really good. Uh, he wears down Kofi quite a bit during the break and then Kofi starts to mount this comeback until Miz hyperextends his knee on the top row and puts the figure four on for a good amount of time. Kofi manages to make the ropes and manages to go for a roll-up. Doesn't get the pin on the roll-up, but on the recoil from the roll-up lands the trouble in paradise for the one, two, three. Kofi Kingston punches his ticket to the elimination chamber this Sunday. And in doing so, he's injured his leg in that match with The Miz that may come back. Giving it a B. Decent enough match with these two. I'm really glad that we we could right the wrong of Kofi being left out of the chamber. I kind of feel like Ali possibly would have been a better choice to have in this scenario if you could have done it that way. Kind of the idea of, uh, of Kofi beating Ali to get into the chamber has a nice little bit of storyline connotation they could have done that way. But the match that we got with Miz and Kofi I thought was very, very good. Lana and Naomi backstage talking about getting their vengeance on Nia Jax last week and make jokes about holes. You could say they're a very wholesome team. Haha. <laughs> What fun we're having. Randy Orton is talking straight to the camera and he's talking about his plans for victory in the gauntlet tonight. He says he, when he has problems, he solves them. He says the Fiend was a problem and he set the Fiend on fire. He says that he's going to become champion once again at Elimination Chamber. He is focused on becoming the champ once again. His video is cut off though by Alexa Bliss, who is in a darkened part of what looks like the Firefly Funhouse, sat in a pentagram spreading dust around and laughing like a wild thing. Quite a fun little bit with Alexa Bliss there. She plays crazy very, very well. Lana versus Shayna Baszler up next. I, I'm not buying the Lana Naomi team. I feel like Naomi could be doing a lot more than just hanging out with Lana. I'm just saying. Uh, Shayna twisting and contorting Lana almost from the off in this match. Lana attempts a comeback, uh, lands a crossbody and gets a two count. But shortly after hitting that crossbody, uh, we see Jackson Naomi getting into a fight outside the ring. And in the confusion, Lana goes for a roll-up, doesn't get it, but then Shayna manages to roll her up, gets a near fall, but goes straight into the clutch and gets the win via tap out. That's that. It's a C for me. Eh, the stuff they did was fine. It was it was serviceable. And it, but as I say, Naomi and Lana as a team, I'm not buying it. Braun Strowman approaches Adam Pearce, not a happy camp of being left out of the elimination chamber. And Adam Pearce says, it's for former WWE champions, to which Braun says, I'm a universal champion. And that doesn't count. An ECW champion almost counts. The universal champion does not. Never mind. Uh, he says he's got to talk to Shane McMahon, has Adam Pearce, to make this right. Otherwise, oh, there'll be trouble. And all that jazz. Braun Strowman's going to do some running power slams on people. Oh, no. And so we come to our main event of the evening. It is the gauntlet match between all the contestants in the Raw Elimination Chamber. The winner goes in and enters the match last. So it's a big one to play for tonight. AJ Styles starts it off. Uh, he, he, he does a lovely little promo beforehand where he promises to beat Kofi. His attorney... Joseph A. Park says that statistically he can't lose. What's they doing in the impact zone? I like that. Omar starts finishing some of Styles' thoughts, ending with the word phenomenal on two occasions, to which Styles says, hey, we go together like M&Ms and grits. They're a good combo. They make me smile. Uh, AJ's first opponent is Kofi Kingston. Styles focuses on that leg of Kofi that was injured during the match with The Miz, which is the right strategy to do. Uh, he lands a dive, uh, does Kofi, on the combat trail. As, as Kofi dives, there's Woods with the trombone going, brrr, which is a cute little effect. Uh, this annoys Omos, who clearly hates trombones, grabs Woods round by the throat and drops him over the barricade. This leads to Omos getting ejected 
eliminated from ringside. And in, in, whilst the ref is dealing with Omos, AJ runs and chop blocks Kofi Kingston's bad leg. So when we come back from the break in the ring, Kofi is still getting his leg worn down by AJ Styles. He somehow manages to push back. Uh, by manages to counter a superplex. Styles hits a leg DDT though and follows it up with a phenomenal forearm to get the three count. AJ Styles pins Kofi Kingston here. Then it's Big Daddy Drew. Iron Drew McIntyre is out next here and Drew just unleashes hell on AJ Styles, throwing him across the ring, booting him off the apron. It's just, he just drives, he just goes wild. He drives Drew's head does Styles into the turnbuckle to get a brief, brief comeback, but this is all Drew. Uh, he counters a Claymore attempt of Styles eventually, lands a dive outside the ring uh, to finally get a bit of offense in, but Drew powers up from that once again, only to get shut down coming off the top rope with a double axe handle. We see Styles lock in the calf crusher, Drew screaming in pain, but managing to headbutt his way out of it. Uh, Drew ends up bouncing Styles off the ropes and Styles whip lashes his neck off the middle rope and then is easy prey for a claymore kick one two three drew beats aj a hard fought match with aj styles out comes jeff hardy next this seems like a fresh encounter jeff attacks drew immediately taking edges advice from a couple of weeks ago you know game recognizes game and all that then uh, so jeff gets the early advantage really goes for it on on drew uh near fall off a whisper in the wind within the first couple of minutes jeff tries to start a hardy chant in a room full of tv monitors which was cute uh then after doing that drew starts to rally uh, after being on the back the back foot this entire occasion he gets an overhead suplex in onto jeff hardy lands a neck breaker jeff counters the future shock though and manages to get back into this briefly until Drew lands another future shock. Only gets a two count on that one. Massive superplex from Drew. Only gets a two count once again. Jeff goes for a swanton. Drew gets the knees up. This leads to Jeff being wide open for a Claymore for the one, two, three. Hard fought win for Drew McIntyre once again. Randy Orton is out next. Orton slowly makes his way towards the ring. The fight immediately spills outside with the fresh Randy Orton seemingly in charge. Uh, Drew back in the ring. Orton outside on his own. Suddenly the lights flicker glow purple and all the screens around the Thunderdome are replaced with the face of a laughing Alexa Bliss. Commentators say nothing. The referee counts Randy Orton out. Randy tries to get back into the ring quickly and gets a claymore while he's on the apron, which the commentators say, well, a lucky break for Drew with Randy getting that count out. Did the commentators not see all that? I don't know, are the commentators seeing some of the weird magicalness? Or are we meant to believe that that's something only Orton can see? They just didn't say anything, which I thought was intriguing, and they didn't reference it. Uh, and then this comes down to Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. Drew's waiting for Sheamus to walk down the ramp. Sheamus jumps in from behind, and Sheamus just batters Drew here, all around the ring, over the barricade, near the monitors, back the other way. Drew, however, the match hasn't started at this point, because Sheamus jumped in before the ref could, could get them going. Drew insists the match go, though, and Sheamus just carries on dominating him. A desperation Glasgow kiss manages to buy Drew some time, and Drew starts to push back into this match just a little bit. But just as he's starting to get a wind, he gets a brogue kick full on in the face. One, two, three. Sheamus pins Drew McIntyre. Sheamus leaves the ring, stands at the top of the ramp, says that he, Drew can't beat him. And on Sunday, he'll prove that wasn't a fluke and he will become the WWE champion. And that is how we go off air. Having, having had Sheamus beat Drew. Wow. Gauntlet match, I'm giving an A- minus to. I really like so many of, the, of the, the beats in this match. Really strong main event that twisted and it turned throughout. The Orton bit visually looked really cool. I think it popped a bit of a logic bubble, but then I guess that's what most of the Fiend Alexa Bliss stuff, stuff does. I can't really complain about that. I think visually it looked great, uh, but it's still a great main event. Like, I feel like this is the best main event we've had on Raw in some time, which is nice. And overall this week, I am giving Raw a B minus. The main event carried a lot of this for me, and it was the majority of the third hour 
was that main event and and rightfully so give it the time and let them wrestle they did some really good stuff the lacy tag match stuff was the low point for me i mean best wishes to lacy evans on becoming a mum uh, and congratulations on everything there but the whole i'm having a tag match oh by the way i didn't tell you earlier or the medical team i am pregnant Hmm. Duh, no. That was a low point for me. But overall, I'm up for Elimination Chamber this Sunday. We'll have live reactions on the YouTube channel. We'll have our predictions before that. Look out for them heading into the weekend. And then on Monday, you'll have what happened at Elimination Chamber graded and the WTF moments from the Elimination Chamber as well. But hey, let's not wish the week away. Enjoy the next couple of days before we get there. Drinking every single day. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.